Hey Amanda, hey Del D. Um, here is your quick tutorial on using Eventbrite and also engaging people in a virtual environment. I'm going to do a quick screen share and we will jump in. So first and foremost, this is just whenever you log into Eventbrite for the first time. Follow me over to the right hand top corner where you'll see my little headshot and I scroll down to manage events. Click on that. And to create a new event, you hit create event. We don't need the basics. So first we need a title. So this is going to be pro public speaking tips. The type of event for this, I'm just gonna say meeting or networking event. My category, I'm gonna say business and professional. And then there's a subcategory. And so for this one, I am going to say, I'm just gonna say other. Note that every single time I picked a category, it gave you another one to do. You have to do all three of these categories for it to allow you to move on. So I also need some tags. So like if people were to search for my event, they would find, they would use these words. So public speaking would be one. I'm gonna hit add. I'm gonna put virtual happy hour. Cause that's what it is. I'm gonna go ahead and put Corona because people are looking for Corona related events and COVID-19. Okay, I am the organizer. Then when I get to location, I'm putting online event. When I go to the start date, this particular event is going to be on May 24th. It's gonna be at 5 p.m. and it's only for 30 minutes. You hit save and continue. Okay, this is whenever you get to add a quick summary. Learn how a A normal person can speak like a professional motivational speaker. Okay, and then in this, um, that's just a short description, like learn how a normal person can speak like a professional motivational speaker, but I'm gonna put more. So I'm going to my friend Melissa's bio that she sent me. And I'm gonna cut and paste it as, a longer description. Based on what she wrote, I changed that up a little bit. Okay, so I'm also gonna add an image. And so you click add image. And just like we do any other time that we add, like to Facebook or something like that, we just click on it. I'm adding Melissa's headshot, which I think I saved on my desktop, yes. And this is not necessarily the most professional piece, and so I'm just going with it. These aren't marketing related. Okay, then it's saying here, add a webinar, right? We said that this was a, an event that we know is online. So in order to add webinar, we need to go to Zoom and create a link specifically for this event. So we're gonna go back to that. I'm gonna click over to Zoom. Oops. Okay, and I'm gonna say schedule a new meeting. And right now, Zoom is making you default to Zoom meeting for the topic. So then I'm putting Melissa's virtual happy hour so that when I'm in Zoom, I can see that it's Melissa's and not get confused about all my different meetings. I'm setting it for 5 p.m. on April the 24th. I'm setting it for 30 minutes. I'm picking the right time zone. And I am not required, I'm unchecking meeting password because I'm not requiring a password and everything else I just use, leave the same. I hit save and I'm gonna cut and paste the Zoom link into the Eventbrite. 
where it says add webinar. Click on that. Let's see. Well, this is virtual happy hour. Cut and paste. Actually, I'm going to put the right title there. And I'm just going to add Melissa's picture again, because again, this isn't a professional event. This is just to keep communities together. So I'm just throwing her picture in there. It gets a little bit awkward because her headshot's bigger than the place, but it'll be fine because this is, again, not professional. Okay, I hit save and continue. And now it's time to create a ticket. Well, in this case, everything is free. So I hit the free mark. I know that I can have 100 people on Zoom based on the account that I have. Because it's free, there's not a need to click a price. I'm start date when I want like RSVPs to start to happen right now. I'm end date right before her event on April the 24th. Hit save. And then I'm going to hit publish. Awesome. So you'll see that now I have a dashboard for just this event. Um, whenever you are sharing the URL with other people, you want to use this one, your event URL, you click on it and you simply copy and paste it wherever you want it to be. The other thing that Delti asked me about is how do you actually get your email list? So I'm going to go into one of my old events and we are going to see how to do that. So let's just use Morgan's for next week. Say I wanted to send out an email to everyone that signed up for self-defense. Looks like I need to do a little bit of outreach today. We usually have 20 to 50 signups. Okay, I'm going over here and I'm saying manage attendees. And then a drop down menu happens. This is on the left hand side. You can do two things. One, you can do an email to attendees through the system, right? You can see there's already some reminders set up there. But the other thing you can do, go back to manage attendees, is you can get an attendee list. And if I want to do that, Instead of a PDF, because I typically want things to be in a format that I can use and I like Excel, I hit full attendee report. I kind of just annoy, um, avoid all of that. I hit Excel. And then when it downloads, I just open. Well, uh, there's everyone that is um, RSVP for Morgan's so far. So what I've done, Deldi was asking, like, how have I curated my list for the little community happy hours? It was really just quite simple. You know, I posted on Facebook for the first couple, and we had more than 40 people RSVP for those. And so I just did full attendee reports, and then I started merging them together and deduping them. So basically cutting and pasting, putting them into one spreadsheet, um, sorting by like name, and then if there was a duplicate in there, just deleting it. So now when someone gets an email um, from me about the happy hour, it's because they RSVP'd or have gone to another one. And in just a couple of weeks, I think I have like 130 names all together. So that's how that worked, but it just started organically on Facebook, just putting out there the first couple. And the other question that Deldi asked me specifically is like, how are you creating engaging events? And honestly, it's just being ourselves, right? Like on these happy hours, the whole point was to show other business owners or nonprofits that have pivoted their businesses. And then they became so popular that more people were volunteering to do other topics that might be of interest to people. So it's making sure that there's something to talk about other than just like, hey, how was your day? Or, hey, here's a topic, Right, it gives um, a subject matter expert the opportunity to share something, but it gives people the opportunity to ask questions or chime in or say funny comments. Um, as far as Delti mentioned, the Superman or super, superhero, I can't believe I said man when Wonder Woman's my girl, um, superhero 
virtual happy hour the other day. Again, have a topic, right? Because people don't know what to do when they just get on a big Zoom with a bunch of people. So in that case, like having a prompt, um, you know, what superpower have you gained? It gets people to start to talk and asking each other questions. Um, trivia, um, the Williams did trivia a few weeks ago, experienced it this past week. Um, that's a great thing. Or depending on the group of people that you're bringing together, um, bringing some topics. So like Amanda, if it was something in Buda, everyone invited to the happy hour brings, hey, what local business are we continuing to support while social distancing? Just make sure that there's a prompt. If it's your family, maybe um, this weekend it would be great. What's your favorite Easter memory that you have of the family? Or the funniest one? Or the most off the wall thing grandma ever cooked? But just coming up with a topic so it breaks the ice and everyone's not awkward and you as the host don't feel like you have to carry the entire conversation. Um, same thing with open houses, right? You know, Ben and Chris said this last week, or Barb Dopp did a good job of saying this, when people are getting on your virtual open houses, you know, ask them in the beginning, you know, how many of you are on because it's Saturday and we're social distancing and there's nothing else to do. Okay, how many of you are actively looking right now or interested? How many of you might be interested in buying a new home in the next year? And then that kind of breaks the ice and then they're more inclined to talk later on and just making them feel comfortable regardless of where they are in their home journey. Let me know what else I can do for you, Mwah. to both of you and I hope you have a great Easter weekend. Stay safe, stay sane, and I can't wait to see you next week.